Food delivery used to just be pizza and Chinese food direct from the restaurant. Now we can choose pretty much any cuisine from all over the world. Right now, New York City is probably the most convenient place to live in the US. Mobile payments make for a cashless society if you have Apple Pay, Google Pay, or the right card. There are Amazon Go stores where you can just pick something up and walk out with it when you can find them. And the biggest food delivery market, if you can afford it. And this is, of course, if you live in a major metropolitan area. Just a few years ago, and this whole industry really hadn't taken off. Then people didn't have a choice. But convenience doesn't come free from consequences. 50% of plastic produced are for packing industry. Plastic become one of the very essential material created a lifestyle that we would enjoy. That is the point that we need to stop and to see where is the balancing point. Single-use plastic have to be stopped. I think the plastic problem got at least temporarily much worse during COVID. Packaging a lot more masks in the water, which was an item that just didn't exist before 2020. Companies like Echoino and Clearbot are tackling the single-use plastic waste problem in Hong Kong from different angles. The problem has grown exponentially, especially because of how large the delivery industry in China is. If you look at the total revenue of the food delivery industry by region, you'd think that the US and China were pretty similar. But the food delivery industry in China really is on another level. The market here is really huge. Other regions have witnessed exponential growth in recent years, such as Southeast Asia, where food delivery is becoming increasingly common. In 2020 alone, the market size in the region almost tripled, with local platforms such as Grab, Food Panda, and Gojek competing for a slice of the pie. That said, the Chinese market alone is still bigger than that of the six major Southeast Asian markets combined. The biggest players in China are Meituan and Ulama, with 67 and 26% market share in 2021. China's demanding working culture often means a lot of overtime. And this is one of the major catalysts for why this market has grown so much in size. But advanced technology and a cheap labor force are also a part of the picture. The first major difference between the US and China is just how cheap it is to order food here. It's often much cheaper to just order the food from the restaurant than go to the restaurant and eat it there. Thanks to delivery fees that are less than $1, ordering out here is the norm. Whereas in the US, it's perceived more as a luxury. This accessibility is due to China's large workforce, mostly migrant workers coming from less developed areas. For them, driving a taxi or delivering food are two of the most common jobs you can get especially after the recent economic slowdown following the pandemic. But unlike the US, convenience in China isn't just limited to the biggest cities. The rise of mobile phone payments and all-in-one super apps has allowed for unprecedented amounts of choice. And I mean everywhere. New York City might be leading the charge in the US, but even in small Chinese towns, you can order food at 2 a.m. and still get it within 30 minutes. It's hard to find urban conveniences in rural towns in the US. You can choose the cuisine, the delivery time, how far away it is, if it's a new restaurant. Then you can choose the restaurant, choose all the dishes that you want, and decide how much do you actually want to spend. But what you can't choose is what kind of packaging the food arrives in. You might enjoy the extravagant packaging when it arrives, but do you think about where it all ends up? There are three ways of uh, treating the, the human waste, you know. Incineration, burn them up, you know, just burn it. Number two, landfill, you know. Open the ground, put the dirt and cover it. 
Number three, throw it into the water. Most of what we collect in the water is either uh, plastic packaging or it's some kind of organic waste like plants or like dead fish or something that's come up in the water. Clearbot is a self-driving all-electric boat system that can collect trash and waste out of water bodies. Basically, with Clearbot, we're able to use artificial intelligence to identify different kinds of objects in the water, and then our boat zigzags across the area that it needs to clean to collect out all that waste. Currently, the market has a lot of these petrol and diesel powered sampan boats that have a crew of two to three people who collect out the trash with nets. And as you can imagine, this is very time consuming, very painstaking. And actually, when they're burning diesel, they're creating more pollution than they're cleaning up. Clearbot is much more cost effective. The solution becomes emission free. It becomes automated, which means it can be scaled up even with limited manpower. And it provides government the opportunity to actually handle this problem at a much larger scale. While innovations like Clearbot are decarbonizing what's already in the ocean, they can't do much to erase microplastics. That's why others are trying to solve the problem before it starts by offering alternative food packaging materials that are 100% biodegradable. If you put the GCM into your backyard garden and let the nature look after itself, it takes around 75 days for it to break down. This breaks down into this structure, water and cellulose. GCM is made from, we call a recipe, a family of fiber put together. The advantages of green material is that they are renewable. Renewable means that every six months you got bamboo. You don't need to do anything. Plastic itself is not everything. There are a lot of things that plastic can't do. Yes, they are lightweight, they are convenient, but first of all, plastic cannot sustain high temperature. They easily melt it. Also, cannot be disposed easily. You need to collect them, you need to group them together, burn them, or, or it's almost impossible to, to have a perfect solution to deal with the leftover plastic. I always say they are too cheap. <laughs> too cheap in the sense that, in a way, plastic becomes have no cost. So all of us just without even thought you use it. The convenience part, the cost part, affected our human habit to casually using it. So it means that it's almost impossible to replace plastic. If we need to give away the convenience, the low price, the durability, the functionality, we, we can't live without plastic. I think is that when humans seek for the convenience and easy to access and become so abundant and everywhere, it creates the problems that we never conceived before. And as new problems are created, companies and individuals are coming up with new solutions. Meituan and Ulama already made efforts to address the single-use plastic problem in 2020 by making it mandatory for users to choose whether or not they actually needed utensils with their order. It might be a small change on the platform, but it can have a big impact. As this innovative tech that's already ubiquitous in China spreads to the rest of the world, Ordering whatever you want, when you want it, is only going to become more convenient. And that's why it's important that it's not just individuals making sustainable choices. From the packaging your food arrives in, to how plastic is recycled and the regulations that control all of that, our choices have subtle and sometimes obvious impact on the environment. If people, governments, companies, and innovative tech can come together and make better choices, gradual change can become transformative change.